got you on locals there. And I've got you on YouTube here. How's that? This is, I'm, I'm learning this as I go. So happy Friday, everybody. Hope that your weeks are going well. I'm, uh, I got myself some Glenlivet, 12 year, and uh, gonna crack that open here. And I got a few things to talk to you about. And I thought we'd just all do this together. By the way, have you ever wondered why I don't, um, I'm not more discreet about drinking alcohol, considering my, my audience? Why do you suppose I don't pretend that I don't drink and I don't uh, hide it from my audience? You ever wondered that? Well, who's responsible? If somebody has a problem with drinking, whose responsibility to do something about that does that lie on? Yeah, the circle of responsibility, Tara says. That's it. Um, you know, I remember when early on when it became apparent that my brother had uh, a trouble trouble with alcohol. Um, this is before my recovery from borderline personality disorder. My my default uh, response to that was, well, then I can't drink around him. I have to hide the alcohol when he comes to visit and and things like that. But then through recovery. What, it, what occurred to me was that if the only time that a person who is trying, that, who has a problem with alcohol or any other drug or whatever, if the only scenario in which they can control themselves is when you create this, this false world for them where alcohol doesn't exist and people don't drink alcohol, well, that's not real, that's not real recovery. Real recovery is uh, having the uh, the discipline to remove yourself from situations if it's going to be too much from you, for you. Um, to not drink when you you find yourself in situations where other people are drinking. You know to have the discipline and the strength to say no to that. Um, but real recovery is not creating a fake world where where alcohol doesn't exist and and you know, living with that mentality. So that's the reason why I, uh, I don't pretend like I don't drink alcohol for the benefit of my audience. Because if alcohol is a problem for you, it's, you, it's really your responsibility then <clears throat> to remove yourself from situations if, if they're bad for you. Right. Well, how's everybody's week going? Down low is there in Good Terra. So uh, I'm reading some comments here. I've got the live stream happening both on locals and on YouTube. So you folks are the locals crowd. You folks are the YouTube crowd. But I'll be interacting with you as we go along. So Down Low is over in the UK, and uh, I visited this place when I traveled over there overseas. And this was the, uh, the Scotch distillery that I was most impressed with, so. Cheers. What are you guys drinking? One of the uh, members of the last symptom that uh, I was talking to last week or earlier this week had mentioned that weekends are particularly uh, difficult. Does all right during the week because it's got all the distraction in the world, you know, with work and stuff like that. But um, weekends are kind of tough for this person, and I thought, well. That person's pro it's probably not that person's probably not the only person that weekends are difficult for. 
especially during a period of time where you might be going through uh, hitting rock bottom or you know coming out of having hit rock bottom. So I thought we'd talk about some healthy forms of distraction and uh, recreation. And I'd like to hear what some of your ideas are about some of that stuff. Also, I wanted to share some quotes this, that I uh, come across this week that I thought you might find interesting. And also, before we get into all that, again, I'll, I'll be talking, but I'll be trying to pay attention to the screen and, so that I can continue to interact with you folks. Nature is by far the best remedy, Down Low says, on locals. By the way, you folks on YouTube, the last symptom community is at the last symptom dot locals l o c a l s dot com if you want to join our group there. Tara says hiking is healthy. Interesting that you should say that. I, one of the quotes that I have here uh, that I come across this week was by Ralph Waldo Emerson. You know the sort of the uh, philosophical poet, and he said, "Adopt the pace of nature." Her secret is patience. So it goes along with what you guys are saying about nature. Download says, I go cycling with a flask of tea and biscuits and find pretty places and enjoy my own company. I think that your notion of b biscuits over there in the UK are different than our biscuits, aren't they? Um, our bi biscuits for me are fluffy and buttery and yeah, country biscuits. We pour gravy over top of them. You guys have crunchy biscuits. Yeah, that's what I thought. So what do you think of that quote? Adopt the pace of nature. Her secret is patience. We'll come back to the quotes. What I want to start with is uh, in this week's episode of the Last Symptom Podcast, I talked about how walking around with kind of this false notion of reality uh, contributes to us having then false perspectives of ourselves, false perspectives of other people, false perspectives of our place in the world, our overall significance, you know, the nature of our worth and things like that. And, uh, you know, going along, continuing that thread of discussion, I wanted to, uh, to talk about that a little bit more. Because most folks in my audience are uh, struggling with a sense of inherent worth for themselves, you know, as people. And it's kind of a fundamental problem that they're dealing with. Dry is the new black, says, I definitely drink when I spiral. But interestingly, it seems my BPD almost stemmed from alcoholic parents. It's a struggle. Yeah, you know, each individual has to be honest with themselves and, and um, be realistic about what they can be around and what they can't be around. And that includes things online, and it even includes me, you know. <laughs> I'm not always drinking when I'm doing these things, but when I am drinking, if that's, if that's difficult for you as an individual, you know, you have to make indiv individual decisions for yourself about whether or not you could even watch the live stream or, you know, be in a part of the live stream. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So there's many things in the world that present completely false notions that really work to reinforce the erroneous ideas about self-worth or inherent worth or lack of inherent worth that most people in my audience are already struggling with. Um, to give you an example, just this week, 
Hello, Dickie Greenleaf. Just this week, I got a notice on my phone that said, because for the last symptom, I use like uh, different uh, small business software and that sort of thing. It kind of helps me keep track of my expenditures my uh, and finances. So I got a notice from this app on my phone. It come up and it said, see how your net worth changed this week. So think about how when we're talking about finances um, and you're dealing with financial institutions and everything, think about how they refer to uh, your financial value as your net worth. Have you ever thought about that? Do you see how that contributes to the notion that your value as a person is not an inherent quality. It can go up, it can go down, it can change, and it's always fluctuating, right? It's always dependent on these external things. Just that wording. <laughs> see how your net worth changed this week. You can see that if you're a person that's already living with completely false notions about how your worth as an individual works, Okay, H. Margie switched to YouTube to be able to join in the conversation. <laughs> Dry as the New Black says, she doesn't have a problem with my drinking because I'm coherent and not drunk. No, I, yeah, I just got started. Uh, I barely even had a sip or two. See, there's a lot still left there. Um, so back to this notion of, you know, when you're dealing with financial institutions or when you go to get a loan or something like that, how that wording, um, they, they talk about your net worth. Well, that wording should probably be changed, don't you think, if we're going to live in a, a healthy society. It should probably be changed to the value of your finances. Wouldn't that be better than saying your net worth? See, let's see how your net worth changed this week. Uh, wouldn't it be better to say, let's see how the value of your finances changed this week? Um, I just missed that comment real quick. It said uh, there, the person's healthy form of distraction was Uh, if you're on YouTube, you can see the comment for yourself, but I thought it was funny. And over here on Locals, down low says, and your is attached to self-identity, yeah. And so you make it a part of you yourself. Exactly right, down low. That's exactly what I'm referring to. You know, on some level, you know that that's not really what it's referring to, but on another level, it's reinforcing unhealthy notions that unhealthy people already live with, that they're their value as a human being is tied into how well their finances are doing that week, right? Well, here's another one. AI, artificial intelligence. Now, I'm sure you folks, like me, uh, are looking out at the, the quick development and advancement of science and technology and you're watching uh, the advancement of things like artificial intelligence. Now just consider for a fact that if you're not careful you could begin to think that artificial intelligence really is something that comes close or that is similar to human intelligence, to, to your intelligence. And if you believe that, think about what that does also to your sense of inherent worth as a person. If you, could, if you begin to believe that scientists can go into a lab and create a computer that can, that can be intelligent and can think and do the same things that your brain can do as a person. They just, you know, like Ford Motor Company, boom, 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 just manufacturing all these uh, intelligent 
intelligent machines. So again, the terminology there, artificial intelligence, contributes to the notion that your enormous value as a human being is really not that unique. But let's, let's examine that a little bit here. Uh, I got this article here. Um, and I got this from, I can't remember what I got this from. I'm subscribed to some kind of Quora alternative. But uh, the article is called, People Ask Me, D What Do You Have Against Deep Learning? Deep Learning apparently is a type of coding. So if you're a, a programmer, it's a type of programming that is really hot and popular right now. So let's see what this guy, who is a programmer, has to say about artificial intelligence. You know, because I want you to know that the notion that scientists or programmers are anywhere near, anywhere near replicating true intelligence or self-awareness in a machine, you know, you see it in science fiction movies, you see people talking about it on CNN, just like it's, it's like we're on the cusp, right? It's just about to happen. Um, the whole notion of that is a complete lie. It's an utter lie. And if you folks, you know, do more research after, after we have this discussion, you will find out that I'm telling you the truth, that this idea that human beings are anywhere near creating a computer that can think and be self-aware and be truly intelligent, you know, even our phones, you know, we call them smartphones. Uh, but uh, your phone can't think, and your phone is never going to be self-aware, never going to be self-aware. I want to re-emphasize re that. And, you know, we can bet money on it if, you, if it'll make you feel better. Mankind is never never going to create a machine that is truly intelligent or self-aware. Never. That's science fiction. That's where it's going to stay in science fiction. So um, this AGI researcher on rebel science, and this is dated February 6, 2018. He says, I, I got a closet full of criticisms I could bring about uh, against deep learning. Again, deep learning is this type of programming language or science that people are investing heavily in these days. He says <clears throat> about the technology of deep learning, which is supposedly artificial intelligence, which again, remember, just the wording there is deceptive. And, and false. It, it paints a completely false notion of what this technology is all about. But he says, I'm against the idea advanced by many in the mainstream artificial intelligence community that deep learning is a step toward artificial general intelligence. When scientists talk about artificial general intelligence or AGI, what they're talking about is human level intelligence. Now remember, We've had these discussions in the past where I've told you that not the smartest animal on earth can even come close to the simplest, simplest things that your brain is capable of doing. For example, there's no such thing as an animal that can reflect, you know, reflect on who he is or she is, who can uh, make plans for the future. There's no animal out there that even knows what tomorrow is, or even is, and it goes beyond that, is even capable of contemplating to, uh, tomorrow. I got a gnat flying around me. It's just part of my routine, you know, every time I do one of these things. Got to have a fly or a cricket or something bothering me. So this person, who is an AGI scientist, or, you know, developer or whatever, says that uh, the idea that deep learning is a step toward human-level intelligence, nothing could be further from the tr truth. 
and he's in this field of, of technology. He says, <clears throat> if you're an AGI, again, when you're talking about AGI, artificial general intelligence, that's human level intelligence, he says, if you're an AGI researcher, this deep learning programming approach uh, should be thrown away like yesterday's garbage. If for no other reason than this one, this is what I probably found most interesting. He says, a deep neural net learns complex patterns. So that's the, the computers learn complex patterns. But, he says, the human brain does not. The human brain can instantly see a new complex pattern without learning it. He says, let me say this again for emphasis because it is crucial to my position. A deep neural net learns complex, pa complex patterns, but the brain does not. The brain can instantly see a new complex pattern without ever having learned it before. He goes on to say that using uh, deep learning technology in open environment applications, you know, that... They're, they want to use this in cars and stuff. He says it's never going to happen. Well, he doesn't say it's never going to happen. He says we're nowhere even near that happening. So, again, you're seeing all this on the news, all these self-driving cars and everything, and it paints the, the picture that we're right on the cusp of this technology being a real thing and being safe. They're, they're not anywhere close. It's all an illusion. He says... Deep learning technology and open environment applications such as autonomous driving is pure folly. Remember, this is his specialty. He specializes in this field. He says <clears throat> it's a disaster waiting to happen over and over again. Since deep neural nets can only detect patterns that they have been trained to recognize, and are blind to things that they've never seen before. Catastrophic failures are guaranteed to happen. Deep neural nets should be used only in controlled environments, such as the factory floor where all conditions are known in advance and humans are kept at a safe distance. And finally, kind of wrap this discussion up, he says that the late philosopher and early AI critic Hubert Dreyfus was fond of saying that the brain does not model the world. The world is its own model. The brain simply learns how to sense it directly. And he says there's a huge difference between modeling and sensing, one that I hope one day will be common knowledge in the mainstream uh, artificial intelligence community. Dreyfus was saying this decades ago, but AI ex experts ignored him and even badmouthed him for it. Yet he was years ahead of them all. Too bad he did not live long enough to see his ideas vindicated. So again, the reason why I'm bringing this up is that I, I really want you folks to really contemplate the ways in which the idea that you do not have inherent worth as a person is constantly being attacked. It's constantly being reinforced and bombarded upon you um, everywhere you look. In order for you to go from the idea that your value as a person has to come from some external source, such as somebody granting it to you, or that it's based on how much money you have this week, or how your hair looks, or what shirt you're wearing, to go from that to go to truly understanding that you're worth really is an inherent aspect of being a human being. It's just an aspect of being a person. And you're never not going to be a person. So that means it's constant and consistent all the time. In order to go from one to the other, you have to be mindful of the messages in your environment that are contributing to the idea that you don't have inherent worth. And you got to learn to see through the false narrative there, right? So if you folks would like to read that article yourself about artificial intelligence, um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will post a link to it 
on our last symptom community on locals, thelastsymptom.locals.com. Down low says that our spirits, our spirits can't be coded into not, uh, knots and ones, zeros and ones, I guess. All right. Let's get into the main thing that I had prepared. I would love to hear you guys give some ideas while we're doing this. Because we're entering into the weekend and because the weekend is tough for some people who are, again, uh, at their low point in life right now and trying to uh, to really get themselves firmly established on the road to authentic recovery. I wanted to give some ideas of healthy forms of distraction and recreation. And I just sat down earlier today and I just kind of come up with some things on my own. But I'd like you to contribute too as we, as we go through these things. How about fishing? I discovered this uh, YouTube channel yesterday of a hobo and he lives I think he's originally from somewhere near me because just the way he talks and everything really reminds me of home but he's an honest to God hobo he's 50 years old and he jumps trains jumps uh, hides sleeps in uh, box cars on trains and rides them from city to city and I can't remember what the name of his YouTube channel is but I'll tell you all about it later if, if it if anybody wants to be directed to it. So interesting. It, I was not aware that the hobo lifestyle is still happening in our modern day world, but apparently it is. And this guy, uh, apparently he had an accident here not too long ago, and uh, he was bedridden for a while, and it was just torture for him. All he could think about while he was bedridden was getting out and getting back onto the trains. And, you know, he's, my, my little girl was watching this with me, and I was, she's saying, you know, what, what's he doing? I said, well, he's, what he does is he waits for trains uh, that he's not allowed to be on, but he sneaks onto the train and actually films himself on these trains going from city to city. The one, uh, there was one, he was going from Philadelphia to Cincinnati or something like that. I mean, he really travels all across the country. And uh, just fascinating to me. But he went into, while he was waiting for a train, he went into a uh, Dick's sports store, and he was looking at fishing poles. And that got me thinking, I haven't been fishing all summer long. And uh, so fishing, fishing is a great form of a healthy form of distraction recreation. I used to love it, man. Uh, especially during the summertime, when the largemouth bass start biting, it's usually right, oh, about 45 minutes before sunset. So I'd get up on some pond that nobody knew about in the woods, right, just maybe a half hour before sunset. And it's so peaceful, so wonderful uh, I can't describe it. it it allows for thought and reflection and peace and tranquility at the same time you're involved in an activity you know and it's a connection to nature <laughs> V Cole says on the local says I'm not much for fishing but I do enjoy drinking on boats she's talking about apple juice of course So fishing, that's my first suggestion for a healthy distraction and recreation. In fact, that gnat is driving me crazy. It just about flew up my nose. In fact, I've been thinking about fishing so much here lately, since I saw this hobo looking at fishing poles, that I might go fishing this weekend. It just depends on how hot and humid it is out there. Uh, number two, how about a simple road trip? 
I was trying to think of things that don't really cost money because, you know, if you're really at a low point in your life, it's very possible that financially you're not doing too good either. So that I knew that was true in my case. <laughs> Never have I been poor. I couldn't rub two nickels together. So I was try kind of trying to imagine people in, um, in similar situations as I was in when I was going through my my recovery. Down low says lake fishing is so relaxing. Beautiful sounds of nature. I don't even need to fish. Just watching is cool. Yeah. You know, uh, in line with that, how about just going to the lake or a pond and skipping rocks? Wasn't on my list, but just as good, right? Serves the same thing. Shamala says, I like walking by the river feeding the ducks. Although a swan bit me on my knee last week. On your knee? Not a lot of skin on the knee. How did it do that? That is nice. Yeah, feeding, feeding the ducks or feeding the birds. Tasty knees, yeah. Those British knees are very, very tasty. Swans are mean, V. Cole says. Hope you guys over there on YouTube don't feel like I'm neglecting you. I'm trying to pay attention to both both at the same time. So uh, it looks like the goose or the swan stole Shamala's grandson's toy and she went to retrieve it and I, <laughs> the goose didn't like it too much or the swan. So a simple road trip. How about that? Doesn't have to be anything complex. Marjorie says, I love to take a flask of tea and watch the sun setting. What type of tea, Margie? Dry as the new black says, there was a homeless guy in my last town in the UK. I started buying him a coffee the days I saw him. Turned out his house caught fire when he was 10. He got out, but they didn't. Luckily, plenty of local people look out for him. You just never know anyone's real story. You're absolutely right. You never know anybody's real story. And, and you know, I'll tell you what. The more I recovered from borderline personality disorder and began to treat myself less critically, started to be less critical with myself, more patient, more understanding, not, not permissive, but patient and understanding, putting my faults into context and stuff like that really changed my life because it allows it has allowed me to do that with other people too most of the time drives the new black get him to get this guy the newspaper daily uh, because that's what he wanted most that's nice all right number three on healthy forms of distraction and recreation how about this how about designing and starting your own themed Instagram account. So easy to do and so much fun. Uh, Margie says with milk, tea with milk, okay. Oh yeah, that's the, uh, that's the British way, ain't it? You know what I might do this weekend is go out there, dig up some sassafras and show you guys how to make sassafras tea since we're talking about tea. Uh, so again, number three on the healthy forms of distraction recreation. How about designing and starting your own themed Instagram account? It could be about kittens. When I say themed, I mean you pick a subject that's going to be the focus of that account, and then you contribute to it once a week. Um, it could be about kittens. It could be about puppies. It could be about poetry, etc. How about this? How about an Instagram account that is uh, revolves around homesteading. Do you guys know what homesteading is? Well, if you don't, how about this for a healthy form of distraction and recreation? How about you spend some of the weekend learning about what homesteading is? Homesteading. So you can do some online research or you can get some books about it from the library that don't cost anything. Maybe a little bit of gas to, to get you there and back. But uh, homesteading, homesteading is where you, you, 
you work, you do really small and practical things that make you pretty much much more self-sufficient in the case of another pandemic or in the case of uh, the previous pandemic coming back for real. I know that in the media you're seeing that it's it it never left, but I don't I don't believe that. I think that's a a spin that is keeping the media in business. But anyway, homesteading. So it's like uh, raising a couple of hens and um, you know egg laying hens. It's uh, growing some of your own vegetables. It's uh, you know creating a uh, an emergency stock of food and water, things like that. Do you know how simple it is to have a couple of egg laying hens? that you can keep in the backyard, even if you've got a really small backyard, how simple that is, you might never have to buy eggs again. And I'm telling you what, real eggs, when I say real eggs, what I mean is eggs from your own hens uh, can be so much better than the eggs you get from the grocery store. And you can tell because their yolk, it's almost dark, 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 dark orange. So dark orange and that that yolk is just so tasty and you don't get that from the grocery store eggs and well I don't I don't get eggs like that from Piggly Wiggly but it's very simple and even if you live in a town or a city uh, depending on what the you know the the local laws are there you could build a uh, a very simple hen house in the backyard bigger than a, a large dog house and and have your own chickens that you, if you're worried about them walking all around the yard and pooping everywhere and you stepping in it and all that it doesn't have to be like that that they're content to be in a, a small pen like I say it's not much larger than a dog house my friend Lambert Brian Lambert has one and he designed it himself it's just beautiful because he doesn't have to get into the hen house to get the eggs he just walks around the back of it, and the roof, it, it, it's got like a pitched roof, and it's on hinges, and he just lifts it up, and there's the nest right there, and he can just reach in and get the eggs out. V. Cole says that uh, her parents have chickens, and they're, they're the best eggs ever. So, um, if you don't mind a little bit of bird, bird poop or chicken poop out in your yard, um, let me tell you a side benefit of raising your own chickens. If you deal with fleas or little pesty bugs or um, ticks, uh, certain types of chickens, egg laying chickens, will will clean your yard free of those things. So they keep your yard free, of, uh, completely free of ticks and things like that. Especially guinea hens. I know guinea hens are are good for that. So double purpose there. Well, triple purpose. You got pets. <clears throat> got a clean yard free of little pests and uh, free eggs for life. So, how about this as uh, number one, two, three, four, five? Healthy forms of distraction and recreation. Research how simple it is to build a hen house. You know, about the size of a large dog house. Could be good. The next thing on my list of healthy forms of distraction and recreation. Oh, wait a second. I missed this somehow. Down low says that she actually accidentally caught a, a goose on a fishing hook once. I was up against a whole family of them trying to kill me. <laughs> Got it off just in time to leg it. Uh, I'm assuming that leg it means give it a nice swift kick. Yeah, they, they don't joke around. Hey, uh, speaking of geese, in 2013, I, I briefly lived in this apartment that had a lake behind it. And re remember, I told you that I, I could not rub two nickels together. And a lot of times, I, I was going hungry. So I was always looking for ways to take care of myself 
that didn't require money. And I think I even told a story one time on Last Symptom Podcast about how I waited until after dark when I was in Philly. I'd go across the, the way to the baseball field, and along the edge of the baseball field, there were these wild greens, like uh, dandelion greens and stuff like that. I'd pick those in the dark to save myself some dignity, you know, so people wouldn't see me picking them. And I'd bring those back to the house and make and live off wild salad. Uh, but another thing, speaking of geese, is that for a brief time when I lived in an apartment across from that lake, I looked outside one day, and a goose had left an egg there, just maybe 50 yards from my door. And I went out there, and I got that goose egg. It was about, I'd say, six times larger than a chicken egg. So it was a significant egg. And again, I was hungry and starving and didn't have any money for uh, groceries. And I held on to that until I was kind of desperate and then I cracked that open and fried that up and it was like the it was like the largest chicken egg, you know, sunny side up that you've ever seen. It was enormous. Uh, but that fed me for the whole day. It's a true story. So you didn't know you were going to get some campfire stories when you come in here, did you? All right. Next up, on healthy forms of distraction and recreation, writing a letter. How long has it been since you sat down and wrote an actual letter and sent it to somebody through the mail? Well, think about how nice that feeling is when you get a, a, a letter from somebody. Not an email, not a text message, but an actual letter. Doesn't that touch you so deeply? Because you say to yourself, they really, they really set aside some time. First of all, they, I must have been on their mind so much that they, for them to go this extra mile and actually write me a letter, sit down, write me the letter, go to the trouble of dropping it off at the post office or whatever, and and, and go into all that trouble. So, is there anybody you can think of that that could really use that experience, uh, receiving a letter from you? You know, a lot of times when we're going through our own intense pain, the only salve or uh, ointment, as some of you call it, to that pain that we just have to endure and, and let it run its course, sometimes the best salve for that is to convert that sad energy into doing something nice for somebody else. V. Cole says she's sending a, uh, a letter to her daughter at college this weekend. And I would say that you're probably doing that because it demonstrates a lot more personal interest than a simple email or a text message does, doesn't it? So along that same theme, how about trying to reconnect with somebody you haven't talked to in years, but that you remember fondly? Could be trying to find them on social media, it could be uh, a phone call, could be a FaceTime, could be anything like that. Next, if you are broke and you can't afford and you can't afford to travel, how about this? How about beginning to research costs and making plans for a place you will like to visit once your financial situation changes? You don't need any money whatsoever to sit and dream about it and plan for it now that, that doesn't cost a thing so that's another option for a healthy form of distraction and recreation next on my list prayer now I understand that my audience is probably split about half and half people who uh, do believe in God and people who don't believe in God so for those of you who do believe in God don't ever forget about prayer uh, doesn't cost anything 
it allows you to express yourself and actually be heard and um, and possibly receive some help that you don't even know you're, you're getting. You know, you ever think about that, how often you might be getting help that you don't even know you're getting. Uh, now here's an interesting one I come up with. Down low says that handmade gifts are the best. Damn. Tell you what, my daughter drew me a picture. I think it was on Monday. And she spent a lot of time on it and a lot put a lot of thought into it. And I know I knew as soon as I saw it that that's something I'm going to have for the rest of my life. Uh, you know, unless there's a it becomes the victim of a fire or something like that. But you know, I, I have no intention of ever getting rid of it. Here's the next one I come up with. How about creating a time capsule using a shoebox or maybe even like a plastic container or something like that? But creating a time capsule using a shoebox or something similar, write a letter to yourself five years in the future about what life is like for you right now and be uh, uh, thorough and honest about it. This is what life is like for me right now. Remember, you're writing it to your future self five years in the future, so you're addressing yourself five years in the future. You're telling that person what life is like for you right now where you hope you'll be in five years and then include some other things in in the time capsule like some pictures uh, some poems maybe a list of what your favorite songs are that you're listening to right now and then put it in the time capsule write the date when you can open it five years from now tape it up or whatever and put it away how interesting would that be in five years from now to open up that time capsule and see how far you've come. Got another interesting one here. On my list of healthy forms of distraction and recreation. How about trying your hand at baking yourself some bread? Have you ever done that before? Have you ever baked bread before? Well, if not, it could be fun to learn. It's not as easy as you think, so you might have to try a few times. You got all weekend for it. Uh, if you have baked bread before, try mixing it up a little bit. Ba ba try baking a, a different kind of bread. I like that one. Bread is like one of those fundamental life's one of life's great pleasures. And we just take it for granted, right? Because bread's everywhere. We use bread in everything and with everything. But it really is just such a staple of life, ain't it? Uh, Download says, smells great cooking bread and kneading dough is good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's healthy. Definitely healthy. Again, it kind of fits right in there with like Homestead. You know, it makes you more self-reliant and knowledgeable and experienced to, you know, it's like adding to your resume of things that you uh, are good at in life. How about um, if alcohol is a problem for you? Again, if alcohol is a problem for you, why don't you get yourself some inexpensive sparkling cider so you can kind of enjoy the experience without having to uh, uh, expose yourself to alcohol, but no, go get yourself some sparkling non-alcoholic cider. Light a candle in the bathroom. Turn off the lights. Soak in a hot bath. Listen to the radio or an audio book, you know. Lay back, close your eyes, enjoy the hot water or the cold water. Enjoy the flickering of the candles on the walls in your bathroom and just enjoy the radio or an audio book or a soccer game or whatever. What do you think about these ideas? I got a few more. We've been going now for 50 minutes, so we'll try to kind of wrap this up right around the one hour mark.
Next on my list of healthy forms of distraction and recreation. Take a long bike ride or a long walk. You know I talk about walks all the time because they're just great. And if you can get somebody to go on the walk with you, that's even better because there's something about a walk that just sets the stage for some really great conversation and I love good conversation with other people. Next on my list of healthy forms of distraction and recreation, plant something. You can plant something outside, like a tree, or you can plant something smaller and inside, you know. Grow something from scratch on your windowsill. Could be fun. Could be rewarding. Uh, next, if you can't get out and meet with your friends in person, depending on where you're at in the world, set up a specifically themed, again, this is not just a Zoom or a FaceTime date, but a themed Zoom or FaceTime date with a friend. For example, you could both agree to make it formal so that uh, you both have to get dressed up to the nines, you know, like, like you're going to the opera or something. Or you can make it 50s themed or, you know, it could be a hat theme, you know, so you each wear the, the most creative hat you can come up with or something like that. Plan for a good toast that you can offer up while you're on your Zoom formal date with your friend or anybody. Here's another idea I come up with. Clean out your phone. Delete old or current contacts of people you don't need to be in contact with anymore or that are people that you're beginning to realize have never been good for you. That's a constructive, positive thing. Uh, you'll feel like you've accomplished something and uh, it'll keep you busy, keep your mind busy. If you're like life here, where life has re like uh, life has been back to normal here since June, early June, life has been t completely back to normal here. So I, I realize that's not the same for everybody. I don't think that's based on reality. I think that's more based on politics. But um, I don't want to say anything to to possibly uh, prevent my YouTube stream here from getting out there. Uh, so if you are not under a quarantine or anything like that or under strict, you know, strict uh, restrictions, how about inviting a few people over for a good old-fashioned game of cards, checkers, or chess? That could be fun. Next on my list of healthy forms of distraction and recreation. Think up and write the outline for a great short story idea. You don't even have to write the whole short story, just the outline of what would make for a great short story. Uh, Dry as the New Black says, I think deleting social media might be good, but hard. I think, that's, I think I've got that here. Okay, I do. It's, my last, it's the last thing on my list, so I'll mention that here in a second. So again, you don't have to actually write a short story just sit down and think up a great idea for a short story and kind of write out a, an outline for it. Next, you could draw or paint. Next, you could rearrange some furniture to make a room seem fresh and new. I used to do that all the time. Um, and some, you ever notice that sometimes when you when you uh, you say, okay, I've had enough, I'm going to rearrange this furniture or this room, you end up rearranging the furniture in a way that you say, well, why didn't I do this months ago? This, this is so much better than the way I had things before. So there's another option. Rearrange some furniture to make a room seem fresh and new. Next. And this one is kind of dependent on whether you guys can even do this or not. I don't know. You guys can help me know. Um, uh, yeah, got less than five minutes for locals. So let's hurry up and get this out. Um, 
I don't know if you supporters on Locals can start your own uh, live chats. So maybe you guys can tell me if that if that option is available to you as supporters. If it is an option that's available to you, why not starting a live chat on Locals? It doesn't have to be me all the time. Uh, if you guys have that capability, I invite you to use it. So uh, the next one, I'm racing the clock here on Locals. I guess I only get an hour on Locals for uh, live streams. The next one is go to bed <clears throat> earlier than usual or stay up later than usual or get up earlier than usual or get up later than usual. The idea is just to mix life up a little bit and see what comes of it. I know I'm not a morning person, but when I do get up uh, early in the morning, on these rare occasions, I get up before the sun rises and stuff like that, it makes for an interesting day just because it kind of it kind of mixes things up a bit. And finally, avoid reading or exposing yourself to any news or other frustrating sources of media, including social media, for a couple of days in a row. Do you have that kind of self-restraint, that self-discipline where you can avoid exposing yourself to the news entirely or social media entirely for just a couple of days in a row. Don't even allow yourself to, to peek at it. At the end, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to make an evaluation. Be honest with yourself and ask yourself, are you less stressed out after that couple of days without that exposure or not? If your mood overall is more positive, then you can make adjustments to the way you consume news and expose yourself to social media moving forward. And what I'd like to say about that is that since I moved to MeWe, you know, I, I still maintain an account on Facebook, but I'm never on there. I don't use it for anything personal. Um, but since I moved to MeWe as a Facebook alternative, I gotta say, my social media exposure, just for my personal use, not for last symptom, but for my personal use, is almost always positive and enjoyable rather than it used the way it used to be which used to be for me frustrating and upsetting it really wasn't contributing positively to my life it was you know once i and i didn't even really realize that until i wasn't using it anymore and i gotta tell you i don't miss it uh so those are some ideas folks i've got a minute and 40 seconds left on locals so I'm just going to bring this to an end, and I'll tell you what. Um, I'm going to hop on Locals and continue this conversation in the comments section of this live stream. So I'll see you all, I'll see you all there. You on YouTube, thanks for joining me. You folks on Locals, thanks for joining me. If you want to continue the discussion, let's do it in the comments section on Locals, okay? Thank you, everybody. End. Yes, end. All right. You folks over here on YouTube, I really appreciate you being around. Let me see how I stop this now. Uh, I guess I'll press that.